you're really thinking about dehydrating meat and doing jerky, um, really good time to definitely either stop in your, uh, you know, stop in and see whoever's at the extension office that can talk to you about it and give you handouts and really do some background checking mm-hmm. to make sure that you're creating a safe product. Right, right. So, and and yeah. with, with jerky or with any of your dried foods, um, you need to think about, like I mentioned, the applesauce that the first time I made it, I mm-hmm. it wasn't successful. Uh, is that like if you're doing peppers, mm-hmm. which I have a tendency to do in the fall because it's wonderful to have the first few peppers, but mm-hmm. when the night before frost and you've got three grocery bags full of peppers, what are you right. going to do with them? And the freezer's already full, then mm-hmm. that's when dehydration comes into my house. Mm-hmm. But you have to remember to cut them big if you're going to want them little to use in chili and that kind of thing because right. they are so full of water, mm-hmm. they shrink really fast. Right. And I've had fall through. <laughs> yeah. Where the grate on the on the dehydrator, the next thing I know I'm smelling and I'm thinking, something is cooking longer than it should. And then I look and then against the heater at the bottom of the dehydrator mm. are these little crispy little pieces of pepper or onion right. that have fallen through the grates mm-hmm. and are now being crispy critters instead of being yeah. dried vegetables and fruits. So right. um, there's a learning curve with dehydrating mm-hmm. that um, I can remember my grandmother My great-grandmother used to dry her meats and herbs in the smokehouse Mm -hmm. and just take a rubber band and keep making it tighter and tighter as things dried. Mm -hmm. And the flies are flying around and, Mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of thing. But, you know, that was the old days, Mm -hmm. and we don't have the old days anymore. Right. And, you know, there were some, um, if you go into some of the um, uh, library resources on um, cooking or being self-sufficient, you know, to make screens and put on your the sides of your roofs to mm-hmm. sun dry the tomatoes. Well, mm-hmm. forgetting that we usually have several birds around here that mm-hmm. would drop by too, and they like the seeds and the tomatoes, so they'll get pecking at the tomatoes, mm-hmm. and what goes in comes out, and then you've got all this contamination. So, you right. know, again, that's why the dehydrators were were first designed is to allow us to have better control of the environment yeah Uh, but when you didn't have it you did the best you could yeah you know stringing beans to dry beans so Mm -hmm. that they could hang in the fireplace at williamsburg and things like that there's a lot of history involved in dried foods Mm -hmm. because that was the only way to do it right and it's a good idea to think, too, you were talking about um, the peppers and the string beans, um, which I hadn't heard about. I never yeah. thought of drying uh, those kind of beans. But um, how much water is really in there, yeah, which exactly. it's it going to change time. shape. and Exactly. You know. They like to curl up and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. But uh, it's great to have it, especially when you're in a hurry. And I'm always in a hurry when mm-hmm. I'm cooking meals because right now, most often I'm home at home at 4:30 and have to leave again by 5 or 5:30 to go out and do programs but right. I still want to have a healthy meal mm-hmm. and my family expects it yeah. and so having some of these dehydrated things ready to go that I can just dump mm-hmm. in the pot with whatever it is chili or spaghetti sauce or whatever mm-hmm. I can make a nice homemade meal rather quickly and mm-hmm. knowing it's nutritious and knowing it came from my own garden so I mm-hmm. know exactly how it was grown and so that makes it makes it much right. makes me feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Well, speaking of drying from the garden, one of my favorite things to dry are herbs that are fresh from the garden. If you go um, to the grocery store, you'll find um, it's relatively expensive, you oh, know, yes. to get to get a little thing of herbs. And there are some herbs that grow prolifically here and in our area. So um, we're lucky, and if we're you know on top of things, we can dry those herbs um, and then have our own. Uh, right. big source of, of mm-hmm. dried herbs. And likely it's that same issue we were talking about earlier. Um, the sooner that your food comes to you, um, and you know, especially if you're growing it in your own garden, mm-hmm. you can have some really robust herbs. And that's, exactly. people talk about the idea of food as medicine. It's a mm-hmm. really healthy thing to be using exactly. herbs in your cooking. Right. And so it's a great way through the winter to be adding these nutrients back is to exactly. use uh, your dried herbs. So I have two 
methods that I use of drying herbs. Um, one of them is you always want to harvest them on a dry day. Oh, okay. Um, that's a really important part of it. Uh, if you go out after a rain, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be creating a situation of, of excess moisture, which... Oh, okay. Um, that would make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense when you're trying to mm -hmm. dehydrate. Mm -hmm. So you want to go on a dry day. Um, and there are two different methods. Once you have um, your herbs in hand, um, after clipping them, I just use a pair of garden scissors. Um, you can either hang them mm -hmm. in a, a dark room and, you know, a space where there's, you know, uh, a, some kind of airflow oh, okay. that's so coming not through. A closet. No, probably not a closet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I usually, I'm trying to think it's dependent on the house that I live in and wow. what the, the best space is. But then when you dry them, keep a close watch on them because um, they will get dusty. And oh, at that okay. point, you don't want to use them. Right. And so it, it's not, if you're going to use them for decoration, you know, leave them as long as you want and then okay. put them in the compost. But if you are intending on eating them, you want them to be in a very clean space uh -huh. and you want to watch them so that as soon as they're dry, um, you can go in, crumble them up and put them in a jar with one of those lids that you, mm -hmm. you know, couldn't have used for canning. Right. Good idea. Another method is to use a screen. Um, and uh, we've made our own just a wooden frame with mm -hmm. screen. Pretty simple. Um, I, I'm guessing that there are, you know, ones that you can buy, just mm -hmm. basic screens. Do you want to hand me the timer so I can muffle it? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um... But yeah, then you put the, you take the leaves off of your herbs and mm -hmm. just lay them across the screen um, oh, okay. and let the air come through and dry it. And again, keep your eyes open and make sure that no mold um, oh, or no do that dust. With my basil. Yeah, it's a great way mm -hmm. to keep it. And then just as soon as you have that, you know, that crinkly dryness, uh -huh. just pack it, package them into an old ball jar, mm -hmm. um, maybe one that has a little crack and you can't use uh -huh. for canning. Right. And there you have your dried herbs. Oh, Great. Yeah. That's wonderful. So hopefully yeah. we've, we've given you some ideas of how to dehydrate mm -hmm. and some of the caveats of what you don't, don't want to do with doing your uh, drying. And hopefully you'll try your hand at something along the way, even if it's the simple thing of gathering up that basil that you don't want to let freeze mm -hmm. on the night before the first frost in the fall. Right. Exactly. So thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. And I learned a lot today. Yes. So thank Thanks you very much. Thanks for joining us.